A question patients often ask me when they have an EGFR mutation they've been on or a lot and never a for a couple years and they're starting to progress, they say, do I still need this drug? Should I stop it? Should I change course? It's a question we have all the time now. Uh, what we've learned from experience is that often patients can develop an early progression. It's, you see slow growth on a CAT scan and they feel fine. They have no symptoms. The cancer isn't exploding, and during that period of indolent growth, certainly we know that we can stay on the drug, maybe get more distance out of that drug, all right? Maybe save it, look for a clinical trial, uh, go take a vacation, uh, be vigilant, and wait till a more aggressive progression that occurs down the line. The radiologist doesn't tell us when a drug's failing. An oncologist and a patient make that decision as to when it is that the cancer is causing symptoms, maybe has a new metastasis, and we need to change course. That period of treatment beyond progression, I mean, that's standard of care. That's about finding the clinical moment when we need to change course. Any patient with a targeted therapy on a drug they're tolerating should be doing that and should save it until a clinical time down the line. The more challenging question is when there's real clinical progression, when you're developing pain from a new bone metastasis, is it appropriate to still use that targeted therapy? Historically, our only drugs for lung cancer were IV, cytotoxic chemotherapies with real toxicity where more drug is more toxicity. Now with a targeted therapy, it's milder, it's much more active, it's much more aligned with the patient's biology. The calculus has shifted a bit. And instead of being worried about giving extra drug because of the side effects, I'm more comfortable continuing that drug, which is well tolerated, and adding drugs to it. A lot of clinical trials in this space will continue the EGFR inhibitor and add an extra drug. And in my clinical practice, I'll most commonly, when I'm starting chemotherapy, add chemo to continue erlotinib. And that's because we know for EGFR mutant lung cancer, resistance is heterogeneous. There could be some cells that are resistant, some cells that are still sensitive. I've had a patient where the, the rebiopsy she showed small cell transformation. Small cell is a weird new disease, right? It still has the EGFR mutation, but a totally different characteristic. If anything, in that patient, you say, this is no longer EGFR dependent, right? Let's start the small cell chemo, skip the erlotinib. And that biopsied area with small cell shrunk, and the other area that was controlled with the erlotinib regrew. And so I restarted the erlotinib, and that area shrunk, and the small cell area kept shrinking, highlighting the fact that this resistance is heterogeneous. And therefore, my practice is to continue the erlotinib, often at a reduced dose that's more tolerable, 150 milligrams, and add chemotherapy. There is no standard of care in this space. There's never been a randomized trial of chemotherapy reported for these patients. Now, the only prospective trial is pemetrexid with continued erlotinib or gefitinib. That's the only published trial of chemo in this space. And so in a data-free zone, you gotta go with your instincts. And my instinct is continue the chemo, uh, continue the erlotinib and add the chemotherapy. And randomized trials looking at that question are underway. The next question is, do we apply that to ALK, to ROS, to BRAF, to other genotype-defined subsets of lung cancer who are gaining benefit from an oral targeted therapy? And my answer is no. That I think there is a different biology to each of these. EGFR mutant lung cancer is unique because 50% of patients have T790M resistance, this one specific type, and that type has an indolent growth. I think resistance for EGFR is a is a species that we understand. In my ALK patients, I do not continue crizotinib and chemotherapy. I think that's still a data-free zone. We need data. We need to ask this important question that we're asking about erlotinib now with crizotinib for ALK and ROS, et cetera, going forward. But it's not such a universal principle that I'm applying it to all of my patients on targeted therapies for all these various types of diseases. You can say in prostate cancer, when you get resistance to Lupron, you add chemotherapy. Therefore, we should always add chemo to targeted therapies, right? But in breast cancer, when you get resistance to tamoxifen, you don't add chemo, you switch. And so we don't know if in lung cancer, we're more like prostate cancer or more like breast cancer. We have to test that question.